welcome back, Trekkers and Trekkers. Well, time for the penultimate episode review, which is going to be the outrageous Okona. As a Federation starship, under the command of Captain General Picard, passes through the coalition of Medina, it detects a small cargo ship under manual control by its single occupant. The crew makes contact with the pilot, Captain Thaddeus Okona, who requests help to repair a part on his ship. Captain Picard agrees, and Enterprise tows. Okana's ship while Okana is brought on board. The crew soon the crew soon find that Okana has taken a keen interest in the women on the ship, the game of transporter chief Robinson, Terry Hatcher in an uncredited role, as in an, and is in no rush to to effect repairs. Okay. Continuing through the sector, the Enterprise is set upon by ships from two different planets, each of which locks its weapons upon the Enterprise, the both are vastly outclassed and pose no actual threat. Devon, for the planet Atlek, accuses Okona of impregnating, impregnating, yeah, impregnating his daughter Yonar, while Kilshaw, for the planet Strelop, asserts that Okona has stolen, tre stolen state treasure, the jewel of Thesia. The two leaders clearly know each other, and both demand that their claim on Okona take priority. Okona denies both accusations, and Picard offers to arbitrate the dispute. During the discussions, it is revealed that Okona has been acting as a go-between for Yanar and Benson, Kushal's son, who are in love with each other. Yanar is pregnant with Benson's child. Benson has offered to marry Yanar, intended to present the jewel of Thesia, which he asserts is rightly his, as a courting gift. Okona was carrying the jewel between the two planets. Picard cannot get involved in the internal political disputes between the two planets, allows Okona to go on his way once the ship is repaired, while Devon and Kushnell are left to argue about wedding details. Hmm. Meanwhile, Lieutenant Commander Data is motivated to explore the concept of humor after meeting Okona. Prompted by Guinan, Data uses the holodeck to generate a comedy club setting and stand-up comic played by Joe Piscopo. I guess that's how his last name is pronounced, sorry if I butchered it, as his advisor when he performs in front of the holographic audience, he, dis he is dismayed to find that they are predisposed to laugh at anything he says or does. As the Enterprise parts with Okona, Data is able to unintentionally make the crew laugh, but does not at first understand the joke himself. Hmm, I wonder why that is. Anyway, let's look at some production notes here, shall we? Billy Campbell is credited as William O. Campbell for his role as Okona, differentiating him from William Campbell who appeared in the Star Trek the, the original series episodes The Squire of Gothos and The Troubled Tribbles. Billy Campbell was a candidate for the role of Commander William T. Riker, but executive producer Rick Berman has explained that the executive's casting series considered Campbell to be, quote, too soft, and the role went to John Franks instead. He went on to appear in movies such as The Rocketeer and television series such, uh, such as Once Again, Once and Again, and Helix. Jerry Lewis, who heads, have had been scheduled to appear in the Rage of Okona, but was unable to play the role of the comic due to a conflict with a guest appearance on Wise Guy. Instead, Joe Piscopo performed the role with Lewis in mind. Piscopo was known at the time for his previous performances on Saturday Night Live, nice, and added many of the and added the majority of his lines in the Rage of Okona. Actress Terry Hatcher was cast as Chief B.G. Robinson, but after the majority of the performance was cut from the episode, she was asked not to be credited for the appearance. Aww. The episode's score was recorded at Stage M on the Paramount Studios lot in Hollywood. It was composed by Ron Jones, who sought to use a musical theme using French horns for Okona to show him as, quote, a knight in shining armor, a throwback to Errol Flynn. The same motif is used in a manner of ways throughout the episode, with Jones re-recording it using different elements of the brass section as well as modifying it electronically. For the sequences with Data on the holodeck, he opted to keep the music simple by giving those scenes a jazz background. Nice. Jones was critical of the executive producer's decision not to have any music being played in the ten forward bar. He argued that there should be some background music in the location as opposed to silence. He offered to compose some pieces and let the producers drop them if they did not like them, but they refused. Jones had created an algorithm to estimate what music would be like in the future while lecturing a Malta and offered to use this, adding that Jimi Hendrix would be 
considered akin to classical music by the time period of the series. He wrote two pieces, but the producers rejected them as they did not want to have modern day music appear in universe. Why? So yeah, overall I see this as a pretty kind of meh episode, all things considered, so yeah. So overall I give the outrageous Okona two warp cores out of five. Well, join me soon for our final episode review of the day, loud as a whisper. So, until then, live long and prosper, everybody.